Afghanistan, a country long plagued by war, violence, and poverty, is now in the midst of an unexpected achievement. Despite its difficult history, Afghanistan has embarked on its first mega-project, the Kosh Tepa Canal, a massive artificial river. This project, undertaken without foreign aid or engineering guidance, has the potential to become one of the world's longest and largest irrigation canals when finished. In today's episode, we will be looking at Afghanistan's current mega-project, the Kosh Tepa Canal. Why is it being built? And how did the country succeed in achieving this immense milestone? Stay tuned! And don't forget to subscribe for more of these videos! The Kosh Tepe Canal is a man-made river in northern Afghanistan, stretching 285 kilometers in length, 152 meters in width, and 8.5 meters in depth. It starts at the Amu Darya River, originating in Balkh province and traversing through Jozjan and Faria provinces. About half of the canal is already finished, and the remaining portion is being constructed rapidly in response to a pressing crisis of water and food scarcity throughout the nation. Some neighboring countries that share the Amu Darya River have expressed concerns about how the canal might impact their access to the river's water. Nevertheless, Afghanistan has made it clear that it won't permit such interference, asserting its entitlement to a fair share of the river, considering that Afghanistan is the only country not currently benefiting from it. The Kosh Tepa Canal is a pressing issue for the residents of northern Afghanistan. This region has transformed into an arid desert in recent decades due to factors like global warming, shrinking groundwater reservoirs, and the shortage of effective irrigation systems. The canal's primary purpose is to supply water to over a million Afghan people and allow thousands of farmers to resume farming. The project intends to convert 55,000 hectares of land into farmland, with a strong emphasis on growing grains and wheat. In fact, Afghanistan has ambitions to become a wheat exporter by the year of 2028. The project commenced in March 2022 and is divided into three phases. The first and second phases involve the actual excavation of the canal, while the third phase focuses on installing water irrigation systems and other necessary infrastructure. The Afghan National Development Corporation manages the project, and it is entirely financed by the government through tax revenues. Although the initial cost estimate was $500 million, recent projections suggest an additional $100 million will be required. This raises questions about how Afghanistan managed such a massive undertaking with limited, somewhat outdated equipment, a scarcity of experienced engineers, and no external assistance. Summation media outlets were critical in describing the construction of the Koshtepa Canal alleging errors, negligence, and subpar engineering practices. However, a thorough investigation has disproven these claims. The government financed and planned the project meticulously, relying on thorough land surveys and soil studies. They then approached this complex work haphazardly. One of the primary goals of these studies was to avoid the need for costly water lifts, prevent winter flooding, and ensure the soil was a good fit. Therefore, the canal had to follow a route across level terrain with a similar elevation to the source area on the Amu Darya River. They also made sure the canal path went through the most fertile lands and was near towns and villages along the route. After analyzing the canal's path, 200 private contractors were assigned to 114 sections, covering the initial 108 kilometers of the first phase. The project involved a workforce of up to 7,000 individuals, including haul truck drivers, excavator operators, and project engineers, who continued to be actively engaged as they progressed to the 177-kilometer-long second phase. Each contractor organized multiple excavators in a line, leaving ample space for haul trucks in between. These trucks were loaded systematically and departed in an organized manner to deposit their materials in designated low-lying areas nearby. Once a section was excavated and received approval from engineers and supervisors, the machinery moved on to the next section, following detailed maps and specifications to replicate the process. The initial phase of the project began with the installation of 14 hydraulic gates, which have bridges for vehicles on top of them. These gates were built to prevent flooding during the winter and periods of heavy rain when the levels of the Amu Darya River rise. 
To manage the filling process and prevent soil erosion along the banks, the 114 sections were separated by dirt walls, several meters wide that had not been excavated. This approach slowed down the filling of each section. Once section number one, the closest to the Amudaria River, was finished, water was allowed to flow into it. Subsequently, the other sections were gradually filled as the dirt walls between them were removed. It's important to note that this canal's bottom and sides weren't covered with concrete slabs, and opinions on this vary. Some see it as a positive, while others see it as a negative. However, from our standpoint and considering the water levels in the Amudaria River, which haven't decreased due to the canal's first phase, not having concrete slab means there can be more natural irrigation extending up to a kilometer from the canal sides. Additionally, it leads to higher groundwater reservoir levels, serving as backup water sources during potential severe droughts. The cost factor also plays a role since adding concrete slabs would have increased the project's expense by over a billion dollars, which is beyond Afghanistan's financial means. They did construct two concrete bridges, one for Hyratan Balk Highway and another for the railway, utilizing a sturdy design with reinforced concrete slabs. A significant part of a vast network of irrigation pipelines was integrated into the completed first phase of the project and its surrounding areas. These underground irrigation pipelines are intended to provide access to water for farmers located several kilometers away from the canal. In addition, they installed other water pipelines to connect with water pumps in nearby villages and towns. During the final phase of constructing the first phase, an impressive feat was achieved as up to 1 million cubic meters of soil were excavated daily. This accomplishment is noteworthy, considering that most of the excavators and haul trucks used were old some dating back to the 1960s. To strengthen the soil and prevent erosion, thousands of trees were planted along the canal banks. Furthermore, a 20-kilometer area was dedicated to planting a variety of crops to assess the soil's quality and the effectiveness of the irrigation systems. Residents in the vicinity of the canal have witnessed and are still enjoying an economic upturn. This is because thousands of workers have been hired old farms have been revived, and road infrastructure has been enhanced. In contrast to certain reports, all contractors and their potential employees have consistently received fair and timely compensation. Another noteworthy phenomenon observed throughout the project is the diverse makeup of the workforce and the considerable levels of positivity and happiness among workers, farmers, and local residents. These individuals have endured difficult conditions for many years due to factors such as warfare, droughts, water shortages, and widespread poverty. Another remarkable development that has come about due to this project is the extensive adoption of solar panels to provide electricity to homes and workshops in the nearby regions. These areas were largely isolated from the rest of the world due to the absence of electricity. Additionally, further infrastructure improvements include the installation of small solar panel arrays on the new farms to supply power to water pumps. While the initial project timeline aimed for completion in 2028, the current rate of progress suggests that it could be finished as early as 2025. Furthermore, there are ongoing construction efforts to build additional bridges and culverts. In conclusion, it's crucial to stress that Afghanistan, along with a significant part of its 40 million inhabitants, primarily in rural and isolated regions, is grappling with a severe food shortage due to stringent sanctions. Consequently, we are hopeful that additional large-scale projects focusing on water management, agriculture, electricity, and infrastructure will be initiated. This remarkable project serves as a promising step towards healing Afghanistan from the scars of war and enabling the country to become a productive member of the global community. And that concludes our video on Afghanistan's current mega-project. Can Afghanistan, with the Taliban in charge, finish this mega-project and start new ones? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you haven't already, Click that like button if you enjoyed today's episode. And don't forget to ring that notification bell for more videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.